Hi, I'm Susan De Silva with Pro Horse Productions, and I'm so grateful to have a chance to talk with Kelly Boyd, back in the day Kelly O'Leary, mm-hmm. right? Right. Who had the chance of a lifetime to train a BLM Mustang to the FEI levels of dressage. Now, having competed in dressage on a domestic horse is a challenge. Competing on a formerly wild horse that's been tamed and gentle and come out of the prison program in Canyon City is so impressive. We had so much fun today going through the photo album of some amazing memories with this horse of a lifetime. She's even got a briar model made of J.B. Andrew. So I was asked to be a part of the Mustang Discovery Ride filming across Colorado as Lizanne Fear takes her gentle and trained Mustangs on a cross-country adventure to encourage awareness and adoption of these animals. After making my plans and investments and equipment to be part of the Mustang Discovery Ride for the entire state of Colorado, it unfortunately became clear that I needed to step away from riding with Lizanne. I filmed at the Cheyenne Frontier Days Parade and Adoption Auction, and again at the beautiful Rocky Mountain Mustang Refuge up in the mountains. Dink and I had a fantastic ride with the support driver Katrina, riding and filming in one of Colorado's crown jewels, the Garden of the Gods. And I got to meet the incredible Finn. Having been a competitive rider most of my life, I wanted to talk to some of the people who have competed Mustangs. I am so grateful to be talking to USDF bronze and silver medalist Kelly Boyd, who has so many great stories to share about the super horse, J.B. Andrew. <laughs> Celebrity horse, right? Yes, I mean, yes. he's got a briar model, he's got a movie, he's got a whole stack of awards he's in two books and you even met Betty White didn't you yes twice <laughs> <laughs> so walk me through Kelly what was your journey like when you first started with JB Andrew what was his personality like well his personality was he didn't actually have much of a personality really so he really? wasn't wild and crazy and dangerous no no not he at all was... He was very gentle but he actually was I would say an introvert he was inside himself and didn't come out of his, himself until um, for a while, quite a while. How young was he when you got him? Well, when Ginger adopted him at two and a half, and I started riding him when he was three. I think it was four years old when he started competing, four or five, and it wasn't until he started competing and people started coming up and petting him and and he was getting all this attention that he really started to come out of his shell and show his personality and he bonded with me like no other horse I've ever seen. He could recognize my car, he would recognize me. He taught me a lesson one time, I was in a bad mood and I was walking down the road and obviously body language says everything and he watched me walking down the road and then turned around and walked away and I was like wow. (laughs) So many people think that their horses are their counselors, their therapists. They come and decompress on horses. When you've gotten a horse who really knows body language, that spoke volumes to you, huh? It did. That it, you, you can't come to the barn with a grumpy mm-hmm. attitude. It taught me a lesson that day. Mm-hmm. And you've obviously I, never forgotten. <laughs> no, I stopped in my tracks. Wow. And reassessed myself. <laughs> what were some other things that Andrew gave you in your journey riding him? What, what other lessons did he teach you? Well, he could get mad about something. We were, we were in the Highline Canal, and he, we were cantering. It wasn't full of water at that time, so we were cantering down in the, in the bed of the Highline Canal. And I can't remember what exactly happened. I think I got mad at him, and I hit him with the whip, and he took off down the Highline Canal, and I was not going to stop him. And I thought, wow, okay, I better just sit here. And he didn't stay long mad thank goodness and I learned that it was not a good idea to be mad and hit him <laughs> with a he horse. He also taught you how to do a timeout with mm-hmm. the horse what was that like? Well because Andy was so big and I was told by a German trainer don't ever let him know how strong he is because his head was half my height and it weighed 200 pounds and so there was no way I could match and battle that. I decided that we would just stop in the corner of the arena and because he couldn't see anything because he had the walls on both sides of his eyes and we would just sit there and we'd wait and I just would wait until it seemed like he had relaxed, the moment was over, we would resume our work and it worked really well because fighting with him was never going to work. He was way too big and I even had judges say to me, It's so inspiring and so amazing to see such a small person navigating such a large horse. 
with in harmony without force mm -hmm. wow and that was able to be something that a mustang taught you that maybe other horses wouldn't have mm -hmm. right my other horse my first horse before andy um hawk he was a morgan and he would just go along and be compliant but i have to say after andy learned that i wasn't going to fight he or you know bully him into anything he would he was always trying he was always compliant he would try his hardest to do whatever I wanted I mean he gave me his heart so he did everything and anything I asked him to do what were some things that you did with him to help you bond with him since he wasn't your horse mm -hmm. and you did all the training well he did become my horse okay though tell me that story so ginger needed to i think she had a life event so she had to sell andy and it was breaking my heart that somebody else would buy and ride andy and so my mother made sure that i got andy and he visited her in the nursing home didn't mm -hmm. he you were yes. telling me about that yep wow what a priceless gift yep <laughs> yep horses bring about the biggest ranges of emotions for us, don't they? We have mm -hmm. some very special horses in our life. Yep. Part of why I wanted to do this interview behind me with the memories with my competitive horses is because several of them aren't here anymore. And so to talk about a special horse, it's okay to cry about mm -hmm. them, right? Like, oh yeah. How, what would that be of us as people if, oh, yep, we have a horse and now he's gone and there was no emotion. No, right. <clears throat> this is, this is incredibly powerful what this mm -hmm. horse meant to you. Mm-hmm. What would you say some other things were that stood out for him being a Mustang versus some of the other horses that you have trained and shown? Because you've got a long career history. You have a very right. successful history with dressage horses. Well, I would say Andy was never built to do dressage. He had, I called them John Elway legs. He was very pigeon-toed. He was back at the knee. He had quarter cracks that went from the coronary band down on both front legs. So he confirmationally wasn't perfect and wasn't the best, but his heart was as big as any heart and he overcame everything to do the work. And he did flying changes perfect. Um, the clinician that helped me start them, he said he was born to do flying changes. He just did them without any to do. And Which for some horses, that's a ceiling for them. They mm -hmm. can't make it from second to third level because they can't do flying changes. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I got 13 one Tempe's on Andy. I was working on Grand Prix, but we didn't make it to Grand Prix. And we were in the arena and we were doing the one Tempe's and I ended up getting, it might have been 15, it was 13 or 15. And I was hooping and hollering in the arena and everybody came in, you know, to find out what was going on because they weren't sure if it was good or bad. <laughs> and I told them and it was one of the biggest moments of my rides with him. Mm -hmm. Wow, that must have felt amazing. It was very amazing. <laughs> what things would you like other people to know about Mustangs from your experience? If someone knows nothing about a Mustang or adopting and training a Mustang, what are some things you would like them to know? Well, I think that they will be a challenge to train for sure. They're not your typical domestic uh, mentality. And they are more flight and instinctual reacting but once you gain their trust and they trust you you have them forever so kelly what do you think some misconceptions people might have about mustangs well when andy first came to uh, table mountain ranch they put him in a separate pen all by himself because they didn't know how he was going to behave with other ho domestic horses they thought you know he might chase them around chase them out of the pen and Andy was only two and a half, and he was a baby, and, and but he was big. Uh, and he cried and cried and cried, and they couldn't stand it anymore, so they put him with the other horses in the pasture. And, and he was totally fine, and he didn't do anything. He was normal in that way. So, Kelly, you brought some books with you today. Mm -hmm. I love that he's been featured in a couple books. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about why someone contacted you and what they'd heard about Andrew to come into these beautiful books? Well, they heard about his story, um, how he progressed, and is magnanimous the right word? That... That's a big fancy word, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and well, he had so much presence and he, everybody was drawn to him. Little girls wanted, you know, they wanted a piece of his tail. And did and, you ever do that? Um, well, they, sometimes when I brushed out his tail, I'd keep some hair <laughs> so they, I could give it to them. And wow. yeah, he, they, they wanted to pet him. They just wanted to stand next to him. And Andy just loved to, and he loved the attention and he loved to be petted and I can relate adored. to that with my quarter horse Dink a little bit. When I first got <clears> him, <throat> I would not let people pet him because he talked with his whole head and I was afraid he was going to break somebody's nose. But in time, especially when COVID shut everything down and there were all these kids on the trail and all these people out hiking in masks and wanting to give them some piece of joy. And I would say, would you like to pet the pony? And so he knows that phrase where I say, would you like to pet the pony? And he'll just stop and he'll turn and put his head down. <laughs> um, so I can imagine over mm -hmm. time, he's like, well, I must be a really big thing. You know, mm -hmm. I'll let you let me. Well, I'll, I'll let you love on me. <laughs> and, and actually in that vein, when I took Andy to the nursing homes, he would put his head down to the people in the wheelchairs and stuff so that they could pet him. And he was so gentle. Wow. From a completely wild horse mm -hmm. just out to him <laughs> being gentle to people in nursing homes. So tell me the story of this Briar model you have. We were at the Colorado Horse Expo doing an exhibition and the representative for Briar was there signing Briar models for the toy store who was set up selling a lot of Briar models. So I asked them, how does a horse become a Briar model? Because back then most of them were deceased when they became a Briar model and they did many race horses. And they said, well, why don't you ask the representative who also was the owner of Briar at the time? And so I approached him and he asked me what, what made Andy so special. And I said, well, you probably should watch the, his, him in, a, in the exhibition. And everybody's attracted to him. He's a Mustang and he's an unusual Mustang. He's really big and he is a beautiful mover. And he watched his performance and he came down to the stall and asked me, well, what model would I use? And I I had actually had not been collecting any models for a really long time and somehow I knew that it should be the Frisian model and there Andy was born into a, into a Briar model. He had 10,000 models made and they sold out and had 4,000 more orders for the model but they wouldn't make any more. Wow, mm -hmm. so this is quite a collector item to have an Andy Briar model because there's mm -hmm. only 10,000. Mm -hmm. Wow. So a little afraid of taking her one and only VHS <laughs> tape, but I have the equipment that I can convert this from VHS to digital because that's when I started my business was back in the VHS days 21 mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. So how many other Mustangs have you been involved in training? Well, I worked with um, Mary Duke's Mustangs. She had two of them. One was called Dub Dub, and then I can't remember the other one. He was a chestnut and he was really cool. She did well with them, I think. She did compete the uh, chestnut that I can't think of the, his name. Yeah, she had a really good time with, with them. And they were fun to work with. They were still a little, little spooky. And, you know, if you weren't nice to them, they were very afraid of you and they would not come near you because there were some people there at the barn that weren't very nice and I always could tell who hadn't been nice to the horses. Well, horses don't lie. Horses don't lie. Mm-hmm. So you have to be really, really, really nice to a Mustang or it will tell on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, thank you so much mm -hmm. for taking time out of your very busy training and showing schedule and all these amazing photos of all these milestones and exhibition rides and competition rides because you got them up to I-1. Mm -hmm. And, and I-2. And I-2. Mm -hmm. So you got him up to I-2 and that is no small feat. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially when he's confirmationally not... <laughs> <laughs> suited <laughs> right Kelly tell me what Andy's brand means on his neck well the first part of Andy's brand which is right there which is these two he's missing the first the first piece right there it stands for the US wild horse and burrow then the second is the year of birth Andy's is 85 so that would be the eight right there and then the five right there and then the next is his brand number. And then they have just a line underneath the brand. And he has a little spot above there, which is actually just a boo-boo. So seriously, thank you for taking a minute mm -hmm. to share 
about this horse of a lifetime. Yeah, and you're welcome. other people to consider yes. adopting Mustangs. Mm-hmm. In November of 1985, the Bureau of Land Management corralled an ungainly Mustang in the Eugene Mountains near Winnemucca, Nevada. The horse was taken to the Colorado State Prison in Canyon City, where he was named Andy. Here he was halter and saddle broke by one of the inmates participating in the Adopt-A-Horse program sponsored by the BLM. Andy was adopted in 1987 for the price of adoption plus a pair of cowboy boots for the prisoner who broke him. In his first few months of adoption, it was apparent that Andy's niche was in the dressage arena, so he was officially given the somewhat more refined name of J.B. Andrew. Andy began serious training in the movements of dressage when Kelly O'Leary began riding him in 1988. Under Kelly's guidance, Andy has placed well nationally and locally and is the first Mustang to reach the upper levels of dressage. People are naturally drawn to the big horse with the soft eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Mustang from the ranges of Nevada. We present Kelly O'Leary and J.B. Andrew. Thank you. 